a percent in terms of gains coming in for the Hang Seng, half a percent for the Taiwanese index. Given that they're looking at maybe the potential real G GDP growth being around two and a half percent, to get rates up to 5%. It is our company. We built it from not, nothing. So we would like to hold on to something. The 60-point rise on the Nifty, good opening for the market. I think this passing time phase, I think, is read by different people differently. I think there is one camp which believes that this is consolidation and there is another camp which believes that this is distribution. For us, partnership is something which we keep on looking, you know, uh, uh, irrespective of investment. 3% high on Keystone Realtors. Zomato's market share now for the first half of this calendar year stands at 55%. For our markets, we're up close to about a half a percent. So the sugar prices in the international markets holding very close to those seven-month highs there. The important thing to remember is that to the extent that economic slowdown is not going to be as acute as was anticipated earlier. The Nifty up 110 points. Well, that was the day so far. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Closing Bell. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleagues, Nigel and Reema. Hi, uh, guys. I mean, you know, as we inch towards the end of the week, the market is making a bit of a dash higher uh, and it's uh, looking good. Uh, actually, you know, the market has trended up through the course of the day. This is very unlike what we've had the, the last many sessions now where bulk of the action was concentrated in the first one hour and the last one hour uh, today. It's been constantly up, slow but up. The, the, the direction has never been in doubt. Uh, the other heartening thing is that, uh, you know, after the initial hesitation, the market has spent the bulk of the session comfortably higher than, uh, you know, the 61.8% retracement of the recent fall. The next side, the next level in view as you climb higher, uh, which comes into view, is 18,442, uh, which is nothing but the swing high of the 16th of November. I mean, just a few days ago, actually, from where the market fell. Uh, outperformance in IT stocks, public sector banks are doing okay, FMCG is higher. Uh, you know, interestingly and actually surprising more than anything else, oil is down sharply. Most Asian emerging currencies are doing well, the rupee is not. The rupee is actually lower against the dollar. And I thought uh, I should point that out, 81.7, about 10, 12 paise lower against the dollar. Uh, in terms of sector, subsectors, it's continuation of moves we've seen in many areas which we can talk about. And later, you don't have US. I mean, US is out. So you'll come back tomorrow and kind of uh, maybe look at, you know, uh, uh, cues other than what, what happened in the U.S. Uh, session, Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, so a bit of a bit, bit, bit thin in terms of uh, this time of the year, especially this week with the holiday in between. Reema, hi. Hi, and we'll come to the close of the November series and just going by the Nifty Futures for December, uh, which is trading at a 140-point premium right now perhaps indicates that towards the end of the year, maybe the markets are trying to make a dash towards that all-time high levels of 18,600. And there could be the late flourish because we seldom ever see the next month's future trading at such a significant premium of 130 to 140 points. As I said, coming to the close of November series, and it's been a good one for our markets, a 3.5% up move on the Nifty. Uh, banks have outperformed, particularly the Nifty PSU banks, with an index up close to about 17%. IT has made a big comeback. And could this be the start of at least a tactical up move in IT? Because since the beginning of the year, uh, the IT stocks, the PE, has been derated as the interest rates started to rise. Now, perhaps that you know the pace of interest rate increases is now going to slow down going by the Fed minutes. Is there a case that at least the PE derating will see a base now or a bit of a floor? And that could perhaps explain the kind of up move that we're seeing in IT names and mid caps. Midcaps have gotten a bit sluggish, not just today, but even for this whole series, the midcap index is absolutely flat. Let's see, Nigel, usually the last one hour on the monthly expiry day also throws up a lot of action. Well, that's right. You know, you've got your levels in place. Uh, the 18,300 put, 18,350 put, well, those are very, very active. But what's happened in the last one hour or so is the 18,400 put. You're seeing a surge in terms of open interest out there. The premium's around 20 points, 15 to around 20 points uh, approximately. So that's being pocketed. And on the upside, the 18,400 call as well, that premium as well in the vicinity of around 20 rupees. So if someone is writing both these two strikes, they're looking at pocketing closer around 80 rupees. And it'll be a broad 80 point, uh, you know, range that you're looking at. 40 points higher than 18,400, 40 points lower than 18,400. So here, as of now, the bears are positioning themselves that 18,430 odd will hold out. Let's see whether or not that happens. But if we manage to trade above those levels, then they'll be taken to the cleaners. However, it appears now that the base, at least for this final 60 minutes, 
is around 18,350. At least that's what the positioning is. A break of either of these levels will take us up maybe another 40, 50 points rapidly. But no cues coming uh, in from the U.S. market, so we're on our own. And it's a bit of a free hit for the bulls. So they want to take this market higher. Well, they've got a perfect opportunity. And that sell on rise hasn't played out today. So that's pretty good news as well, Rima. Okay, uh, thanks uh, for that update. Let's uh, get our viewers up to speed on what we've lined up on Closing Bell and what they'll get to see in the next one hour. Insurance regulator IRDAI uh, agrees to a composite expense cap in proposed norms for players giving a fillip to the industry and insurance distributors. All details on the show. Apollo Hospitals is surging in trade on the back of bullish brokerage commentary. Again, we'll get you details of those notes on Closing Bell. And in the last couple of years, the Tata Group has been expanding its presence across sectors through multiple strategic acquisitions of very large companies. A complete wrap on the acquisition spree of the Tata Group coming up on Closing Bell. And finally, we'll be joined by our Alpha Manager for the day, Amit Gupta of ICICI Securities, to discuss his top portfolio bets. All right, how should you position yourself in the last hour of trade? That's a, a question. And uh, Mitesh Thakur is with us to answer that for us. Mitesh, hi. Uh, good afternoon. And uh, do the do these eighteen four hundred kind of levels come into sight? And uh, what's the trade now, Mitesh? Uh, afternoon, Prashant. I think uh, uh, I was highlighting this level. In fact, not eighteen thousand four hundred to be precise, but uh, around eighteen thousand four twenty four thirty. Uh, on the uh, from the fifteenth of November till about seventeenth of November for three trading sessions, I think you know we have about multiple hourly highs around the year. So we we have talked about taking long positions day before and I think uh, we've booked about uh, two-thirds of the position. Now waiting to see if we can get past 18,450 to add fresh longs. But for the timing, I think that's the stand. So you might, uh, you are at a level which is uh, recently acted as a very strong supply pivot. So I think just to respect that, take some profits on the table, see how it goes and if it uh, manages to get past immediately, then you will add long. Otherwise, you'll get a dip quit, which will be a better entry point. Uh, having said that, I have uh, two buy calls right now. Uh, Sun Pharma is a buy. Uh, that's moving up nicely. That's a buy with a stop below levels of uh, uh, 1015 for targets around 1060. And the other one which I like is uh, Tata Consumer. Uh, it had news in the morning, but I think now we are seeing some follow through happening and the setup has improved dramatically in the last two hours. So that's a buy with a stop below levels of uh, 778 and a target of around 820 on the upside. Let me look at Okay, all right. Got those levels in place. Mitesh, we'll keep coming back to you. The final 60 minutes should, as always, be. A bit of a cracker. Let's see which way this swings. But for the time being, let's focus on one of those hospital stocks that have done very, very well in the last few days, seeing a good up move. Ekta standing by to tell us about Apollo Hospitals and why that stock is buzzing around. Ekta. Well, positive brokerage reports which have come through for Apollo Hospitals. I'll start with Credit Suisse, which has written on the stock. They have an outperform call with a target of 5,100 rupees. According to them, Apollo 24-7, which is basically the digital arm, is scaling up to a leadership position. They are targeting to expand the user base as well as the annual medicine volumes by around 5x. They are supported by an extensive physical network. And according to them, the upside from the Amazon partnership would probably reflect an FI. 24 discounting pressure has eased as well now earlier this week we had UBS uh, which turned positive on Apollo hospitals remember at one point in time earlier in the year they had downgraded the stock to neutral but now they've upgraded the stock to buy with the target price of 5600 rupees according to them the company is ex executing well on new initiatives the company has come a long way in terms of ramping up digital presence Apollo 24 7 is leading in both monthly active users as well as app downloads Thank you very much, uh, Ekta, for that. Devin Choksi of KR Choksi Securities is also with us on the show. Uh, Devin, you heard the bullishness from brokerages about the, the digital arm, Apollo 24 by 7, as it's gaining scale. The Amazon partnership is likely to contribute. And even the numbers from the pure hospital business in the quarter gone by were very solid and ahead of what the street was anticipating. Does this stock look attractive to you? Yeah, <clears throat> good afternoon, Reema. Well, obviously, I think the numbers are remaining strong. The digital uh, pharmacy business, I think, is also remaining, I think, quite much, quite, I think, in uh, in, in the reckoning. Uh, but more importantly, I think whether this business uh, would start contributing to the profits, this is more important because I think the investors' attention has definitely started shifting to the businesses which generate profit vis-a-vis -vis pure uh, producing the pure market growth. I would think that I think the profit element would be important. 
uh, obviously i think the last quarter result has been relatively more stable and i think more uh, improved i would say uh, going forward whether i think we are buying this particular stock i would think that i think it, this kind of businesses are always remaining a little bit more expensive i think one will have to buy with little bit of forward outlook as far as i think the outcome is concerned of the business currently we don't have any recommendation on the stock so wouldn't put across my uh, recommendation at this point of time but any correction in the price i think would be a meaningful entry into this kind of a stock mm, we had the management of kims also with us by the way earlier today uh, and uh, you know they were also i mean uh, the, the hospital companies managements have uh, sounded uh, pretty optimistic about being able to uh, grow uh, the revenue per bed margins etc uh, Devin, hi, afternoon. Uh, any thoughts on uh, Fino Payment Bank? I mean, do you track it? Do you have coverage? We had, again, that management with us as well earlier today. Uh, today morning, I mean, second day in a row, uh, strong gains. Hi, Prashant. Good afternoon. Well, we don't track this company, so would refrain from putting any views. No problem. Uh, the, the market itself, Devin, is it looking uh, like it's finally breaking out? Uh, the earlier highs, which... Uh, we'll come come back into sight pretty quickly. I mean, the market didn't dip that much. It's just that it's take, taken a little longer. Your sense? Yeah, I think that's an important point. I think that the market is basically showing a lot of strength at the lower levels, and I think it is not trying to go down. But as I see it, I think this particular period is more of a consolidation period. Even if I think the market has to go down by a few hundred points, then somewhere around, I think, 18,000, 17,800 remains, I think, a very strong support for the Nifty. And I think should it sustain above 18,400, certainly I think there is a case for further upside. As of now, as I treat it, I think the market is purely in the range, largely driven by some of the heavyweights in IT, largely driven by heavyweights in even the banking space, and even likes of Reliance. So if this, I think the stocks in this space, I think if they start putting uh, going up, maybe I think the market can show a uh, relatively higher amount of, uh, or higher levels, I think, from current level. Uh, a meaningful participation will have to be there from likes of freelance, likes of uh, some of the banking heavy stocks. Okay. Hi, Devin. Good afternoon. Devin, uh, do you track Reddington by any chance? <laughs> no, Nigel, I'm not tracking this company. Okay, all right. No, we just thought to be we'll ask you on that because, you know, it appears that one is moving with a lot of strength as we speak. I think just pull up the intraday chart. Reddington is breaking away, it appears so. So just keep an eye out uh, on that. Um, uh, uh, Devin, I want to ask you about a couple of other names, you know, stocks that are really bucking the trend. IEX, one of the big underperformers, platform space, it has saw a sharp correction from the top, but now they're talking about a buyback, trying to get their house in order. Do you have a view there? Again, as a house, I think we don't have a view on the company, but in general, I think I believe that the business probably is looking interesting, particularly after, I think, seeing a sharp price correction. Because of the correction in the price, I think the uh, attractiveness has increased, and that is where I'm seeing the fall of buying. But as I said, I think we don't have the coverage, so we're different from putting any recommendation. Okay. I mean, the other part of the market which is doing well is uh, insurance. Actually, not all insurance, I must add. Uh, there are two names. One is PB Fintech, and the other is Star Health. Both are up sharply in trade. Uh, and uh, my colleague Surubi is standing by. Uh, IRDA, uh, IRDAI, the regulator, has released a revised consultation paper on expenses of management. Surubi is here uh, with implications uh, for uh, these companies. Surubi, over to you. Insurance companies have been in focus today and that is because the IRDAI has released a revised consultation paper on expense of management and commission. According to this, the regulator has done away with the specific caps on commissions to agents and intermediaries that it had earlier proposed in August. It has now suggested that the commissions paid by insurance companies, both life and non-life, should not exceed the expense of management. The proposed expense of management limit is 30% of gross premiums for life insurance companies and 35% of gross premium, premiums for standalone health insurance companies. The, this may come into effect from April 2023. Now what will it do for these companies? It will give significant flexibility to insurers to plan their expenses, it will reduce the compliance efforts and cost and it will also have a lower probability of tax disputes. It will also help companies like PB Fintech, where it substantially reduces the regulatory risk for commission rates. All right, uh, Surbi, thanks very much uh, for that. As I said, I mean, the impact is not uh, for all, but it's showing up in some places. Star Health, uh, in particular, we had the management actually, we, we asked them about this. They said it's manageable. The earlier norm said that, uh, you know, the expense of management, which includes everything, I mean, the compensation paid to 
uh, agents, the compensation which the top management takes, the workforce takes, all of that. I mean, that will be capped and it will have to be brought lower every year. Uh, and that seems to have been done away with, as Saruby explained. Uh, Devin, uh, any thoughts on uh, insurance as a space and anything you like here? So, Prashant, as space, I think I find that life insurance companies probably will have relatively better time. Purely because of, I think, two changes which we are seeing happening in coming times. One, I think the uh, insurance commission rates, I think, are going to, for the agents, are going to come down. That could possibly mean, I think, better days ahead for the insurance companies. Second thing, a disruptor is in making where uh, the exchanges are going to be distributing the insurance products. Should that particular uh, activity gain momentum, like mutual fund, probably you would see a higher amount of uh, momentum into the insurance businesses. And that's where probably I think uh, one could see double digit kind of a participation in the country as far as I think the population covered under the insurance. So I think there is an opportunity for the life insurance companies going forward from the growth perspective. However, having said that, I think the kind of commission rate coming down may not be, I think, a very good news for some of the distribution companies, and that's where probably one will have to keep an eye on. Maybe a little early days, once I think the guidelines and everything comes out clearly, one will have to uh, wait and see how exactly it works out. Okay, today there was also a very large block deal on PB Fintech, close to about 1.6% equity changed hands. Um, you know, aggregating to about 300 crore rupees. Uh, so that could be one seller who was trying to sell for the last couple of days being out of the market now. So that overhang perhaps has also been lifted. But Devin, do stay on. We need to slip into a very short break. And here's a quick programming note to all our viewers to fully commit to the cause of bridging the gender parity gap in the workforce. CNBC TV18 is all set to lead charge with a one-of-a-kind mega initiative, Future Female Forward, the Women's Collective, presented by HSBC. The initiative will be officially launched through an exclusive on-ground event on Friday, the 25th of November, in the presence of Shireen Pan, Managing Editor, CNBC TV18, Mr. Hitendra Dave of HSBC and other women leaders of India Inc. Also in attendance will be some of the most influential voices from business, entrepreneurship and entertainment. So don't forget to tune in to CNBC TV18 tomorrow, 25th of November, 5.30pm onwards. Welcome back. Some PSU banks are coming in for selling pressure. So IOB is down 4.5%. Take a look at Central Bank of India. A couple of the other mid-cap uh, you know, banks, not PSU banks, uh, but you could also see some pressure coming through on DC Baby Bank, City Union Bank. These are stocks which have come off from the high point of the day. Apart from that, this week, while we've seen some very big moves in names like Ease My Trip, which is up 50% so far this week, and now there is news that the board will meet on the 1st of December where they will consider an acquisition. Uh, but there have been many other companies like Nika, um, you know, which have see, come under significant selling pressure this week. Um, Zomato is another one that we've been tracking very closely because according to the latest research, it is gaining market share at the expense of uh, Swiggy. And that's one of the reasons why Zomato is higher in trade by nearly 2%. Uh, Devin, it's a two-horse race, this food delivery market, Zomato and Swiggy. And they've been fighting it out, right, tooth and nail. But now it appears that Zomato is um, slightly leading. It's winning this race. Uh, would you attribute a higher valuation to Zomato? Because this is a very big market. And if Zomato can capitalize on this lead over uh, Swiggy, it means big numbers. Yeah, at times, Tima, I think it makes more sense to buy a company in your portfolio once I think it shows the signs of making profit and that on a sustainable basis. Here in this case, I think while they are gaining the market share, I think still we are talking about, I think they are not making profits. And I think the preference of investors continue to remain on companies, I think, where they would basically reflect if they are making profits and then probably I think higher amount of investment and allocation will take place. I'm not against the uh, ability of new age businesses, but the fact is that I think at this point of time, when the situation remains, I think, quite fluid as far as market is concerned, probably I think the uh, investors would demand the companies in the portfolio where I think they see the profits, and that's where probably I don't see immediately a case to buy into a company like Zomato. 
maybe I think it becomes a proper fit for somebody to acquire at some point of time, but that would be more of a strategic view. And that kind of thing cannot probably be assigned uh, the recommendation for buy side. So I would rather wait before I think considering them into into buying into the portfolio full budget. All right. Um, thanks very much, David. Appreciate you joining in and uh, running us uh, through all of your views as always. I mean, the market steady 130 points on the Nifty. Amit Gupta is vice president and fund manager at ICSA Securities. He's joining us to take some uh, questions. I mean, good to have you here. I mean, uh, your uh, top bet for a while has been uh, financials, both private and public. Uh, and I'm assuming that nothing really changes, right? Uh, the, since the last we spoke, the market's not done very much, although at high levels it's shown some fatigue, refusing to take out previous highs. Uh, what's your view now? So I think this fatigue is likely to be there. I mean, obviously when we have spent one and a half years now within a, a band, but we have outperformed the global markets, I think slowly the markets are coming out of the range now. But yes, some kind of consolidation, slow move may be there, but eventually I think the trajectory looks upward. Because, see, very clearly, one of the weakest link in the markets was euro. And we have we saw that euro was continuously falling from 1.25 against dollar. It declined to 0 0.97 against dollar. And we saw many negatives were priced in. The people were saying that they are not able to increase interest rates and U.S. is increasing. Now, we have seen that some part of interest rate hike of 75 bips has been seen by ECB. And before the winter season, we saw that the capacities were filled up to almost 98% in Germany and EU also. So that is where the energy prices, which were 75 euros, they declined to 30 euros. And I think this is where euro has stopped falling and dollar has stopped rising for the time being. And that is where we are at a wicket, where possibly one or two months at least, markets can have a sustainable period. And you will see markets a little bit moving higher and there may be some stocks which can start participating now, particularly from the banking space also. Okay, all right. Hi, Amit. Good afternoon. Uh, Amit, I can see Mahindra and Mahindra is part of your portfolio. We just had some news coming in on Maruti uh, that the market share has increased a little bit in the SUV segment. Uh, you know, that flash was just running uh, out there. And that's been the one that they've been uh, lagging in. Their overall market share as well has moved up. From the auto pack, you all are sticking to Mahindra and Mahindra, or do you believe some of these PVs like, my, uh, like Maruti, uh, they're giving some scope out there? So Mahindra is uh, very much part of the portfolio still. We bought last year, you know, uh, in the beginning of last year, around 600 levels. And it, it has got doubled in the portfolio. And there have been triggers which are working in favor of Mahindra. But we also need to look at that there are, you know, certain stocks which are at a relatively better valuations in the same sector. So market leader Maruti, I think it's coming up. Because the problem with Maruti was that in the last one year or so, they did not come out with any major SUV launch. And SUV as a segment is coming really high, higher actually in the overall passenger vehicle market share. It was 20%, now it is close to 50%. And Maruti had a market share of only 7% till July uh, in the SUV segment. And now it is inching up. I think by financial year 23 ending, it may be somewhere closer to 14, 15% at least. So this is, and they, you are going to see more launches uh, from Maruti in the same segment till, and it will continue till financial year 24. So there may be some good period coming actually for the stock, and that is why we have included it in our A equity portfolio. Another, another positive, uh, maybe couple of positives, maybe that the steel prices are down, so that can work as a margin uh, accretive actually to the company, and and we have seen that rupee has appreciated against uh, yen. So they, they used to pay the royalty in yen and that is going to be benefited for them because their ultimate outflow may be lower because of this forex uh, benefit. By the way, just take a look at some of these mid-cap IT and the way they're surging. Birla Soft 5%, Persistent Systems up 3.5%, First Source, l and Infotech, Latent View across the board. You've seen buying coming through in the last 30 minutes. Remember, these are stocks which are down nearly 35-40% since the beginning of the year on the back of rising interest rates, the fall that we've seen in Nasdaq. And if the news flow on the U.S. interest rate starts getting more benign, it is positive, for, at least from a sentiment valuation point of view for these IT companies, and the market appears to be recognizing it. So IT is clearly leading the way. The Nifty IT index has now surged to a gain of close to about 2 percent. In fact, even a little bit more than that. Uh, Amit, uh, afternoon, 
One of your thoughts in on Bajaj Finance, that is the, you know, one of your top bets, I think the second um, highest weightage in your portfolio, close to about 6%. Now, Geo is entering into the financial space, and we know Geo can be a big disruptor in whichever industry it enters. Do you think that can be a big risk for companies like Bajaj Finance? So, see, actually, if you see right now, uh, the last year, we saw that growth was lower, actually, in the company in terms of AUM, but it has really picked up well, actually, now in the last couple of quarters. And now they are talking about that they can double the AUM in the coming, you know, three to four years perspective. So that is something that the management actually has looked into. But yes, I understand the fact that consumer space is going a little slower right now. So it is more a luxury segment which is performing, not the mass segments which are performing right now. And that is where I think Bajaj Finance will have to lo start looking into that. But now 32% of the overall loan book of Bajaj is also into the housing loan, which is picking up now eventually. So it is not that interest rates are denting that much the housing uh, uh, movement because we have seen in the last uh, two decades or three decades now starting from 1990s that whenever inflation actually has moved higher we have seen that housing uh, has also you know uh, moved higher so that particular traction happens because the housing prices little bit they start moving up whenever the developer they start moving um, increasing the prices because of inflation so it's a direct impact so that is that is the same trend uh, i think can go now and 8 to 10 years of lull cycle has already seen in the in the housing i think that is going to turn back and you may see a good cycle now for housing so 32% housing loan book in the same stock with the digital uh, premise i think that is going to be very good for them if consumer overall is not working so for these these these, these are the two segments they need to look at the luxury uh, consumer segment as well as housing now going forward mm. you know uh, amit the one reason why uh, this is a broader kind of question mid caps and small caps maybe are struggling and not struggling but <clears throat> gains have been capped is because in december starting actually late november a lot of these lock in for new listings uh, expired right we're talking about thousands and thousands of crores of supply uh, which has come into the market which has gotten absorbed right that does take away from uh, the uh, the uh, you know allocation to the uh, to uh, to other parts of the market once this is done uh, i guess it will take time and uh, some of the supply will keep coming i mean names like paytm etc very little has gotten sold uh, potentially there is perhaps is more to come over time uh, but do you think uh, once the bulk of this is done uh, things should ease up a little bit in the broader space mid caps etc so i think you are partly right when the bulk of the selling is getting over obviously the fall in the stocks can stop but that is not the only thing uh, if we are buying something we need to look at the growth also going forward and i think that will come with the profitability only and these companies actually now they have a some challenge because when your internal accruals are not coming uh, and the cost of capital is going higher the fund raising which they were doing actually before because that ultimately they have to do the run the business to increase their market share uh, and that is where the you know the burning of cash also starts happening so uh, so burning of cash has to be stopped the profitability has to come back but raising of capital i think it will be a bit challenge going forward in this scenario so that is where i think look at those companies where at least the profitability trend is there now look at lnt why they have consolidated lnt infotech and mindtree there may be some synergies but definitely this is a challenging period and that is why the consolidation is the is is you know something that is going to happen now in this industry also possibly in the mid cap space so we need to wait for that till that time i think you may not see a sustainable move possibly the large cap cities can give you some move it is possible in forces from 21 times it can move to 25 26 times but uh, the premium valuations at least i think they have shaved off because of the fear of lower discretionary expenditure at least if we can take q from accenture or cognizant uh, outlook uh, on the it expenditure at least amit the play on bharti airtel which is also one of your big bets is rising arpus and arpus already are rising i think in the last one year they've gone up from 140 to 170 180 rupees and the expectation is that they will continue to rise what according to you is the big risk that arpus don't rise from here on because uh, you know they've had a troubled past the industry they found it difficult to go ahead and pass on uh, rate hikes so what according to you is the big risk for bharti airtel from here on so i think first of all positives are more because 5g is going to be launched now uh, in various circles 
and that is where you will see more and more new things coming at least from the industrial uses perspective so whether it is internet of things whether it is artificial intelligence that is how actually i think more growth is going to come you would have heard that bharti is also opening data centers now separately what amazon has done on a bigger scale globally so they are also looking to do now at least from here which is going to be in demand actually going forward the other third part is if you see recently what they have done uh, in the circle of uh, haryana and odisha uh, they are the prepaid price was around 99 rupees they have scrapped it they have brought it to almost 155 which is almost 57% increase and uh, this is this is the these are the circles where there was more affordability towards 99 so they have taken this risk and that we have to see going forward that if the competitors also follow this i think it's a win win situation for all if the competitors are not following this and if they start rolling it back then it's a trouble at least going forward so okay. this is a risk taken by the company and we have to watch it now okay all right amit thanks so much for stopping by discussing all those stocks and how you all are approaching uh, you know the fund as well but uh, good speaking to you and good hearing your thoughts by the way as we speak the sensex has moved to a 52 week high the nifty as well has moved beyond that uh, you know 18430 that was a bit of a resistance zone at least that's what the bears were playing for that it will hold in this level and now we are running away you know as we pointed out earlier if we can't get past this level there'll be a big squeeze that will happen and the call writers they'll have to run for cover itc has moved into the green hul as well is moving higher infosys that's the big driver out there infosys moves up the it index as well as moved up and explains why we are moving towards that 18450 odd so buy the dip has worked yet again don't chase the opening that's perfectly played out in today's trading session well we'll slip into a short break we we'll come back and we'll track the final 30 minutes of this series but as we do that there's some important opinion coming in from Arvind Sanger of Geosphere Capital we're kind of bumping against this level that the market has tried to break through uh you know i think it's three times now but uh, in any case uh, i think that uh, if we break through this level you could get a bit of a, a bull run here uh and uh, and you know you never know in these kind of uh, technical sentiment driven rallies how quickly how much things could go but you know i think uh, we look at it more in a medium term perspective and and what you asked is clearly true in the short term but i think the earnings fundamentals looking into calendar 23 fiscal 24 uh, for india look very solid so that's where we hang our hat in terms of uh, you know being cautious about valuations but finding opportunities uh, given the growth backdrop that exists crude can't go below 85 i think that's the part that we're not recognizing that the crude market is at extremely high lows compared to any historical economic slowdown Therefore I would worry not about crude being a benign story but what happens when uh, you know if the recession does abate if demand does come back and China certainly from zero covid we know that when that goes there's going to be a huge amount of revenge travel so I think all the bias on crude is on the upside not on the downside given that the US has been sitting on you know the strategic petroleum reserve release which has kept a lid on crude prices and that ends at the end of this year it's very clear that they've come out with this i forget it was a 20 point program or whatever to uh, try to uh, correct things the problem they have is they're still working on an mrna vaccine their own vaccine is not that effective and they're also stockpiling some you know uh, drugs to be able to antivirals to be able to deal with it so i think they're moving in that direction winter is the worst time to try to reopen right because you're going into the highly infected period so my sense is that this will be the next three months uh, you know the news flow is going to be mixed the policies will try to be positive but covid is going to spread but once we get into march april next year i strongly expect uh china to you know they given every signal that they want uh, they want to dish this strategy and i think that's the time frame in which you should expect that
today we have a great lineup of very influential voices. These are people who are going to shape the world. They are going to change our tomorrow. These are leaders, ladies and gentlemen. And it is now time for us to introduce you to these very powerful, influential leaders. The CEO of this panel. Madam, can I have you introduce yourself, please? My name is Nandita Nair. I studied the Bombay International School in seventh grade. I enjoy the arts, all of the sciences and math. And if there's one thing that you would like to do as the current CEO of this panel to change the world, to shape the world, what would that be? I'd like people to understand the consequences of their actions and take responsibility for them. The people blame other people, but we are the people. So we're blaming ourselves and then telling ourselves that we are not to blame. So the one change that you would like to drive? Um, that I would like to drive is um, for... If I was being big, I, I will say. Oh, I'm not letting you. I'm so sorry. We will let you take a picture also, Kabir. In 30 seconds, we will let you take a picture. Um, I, I think a big change is the same as my wish. But yeah, a change I would make is, if I had a power to make that change is to reduce the effect that carbon dioxide has on the atmosphere. And if it was a smaller change, like it couldn't have such a drastic effect, the markets would open later. I want my dad to spend time with me, like a lot more. Well, we'll try. We, I think it would be easier to actually do something about the carbon dioxide than make the, <laughs> the, the markets change their timing. But thank you so much. All right. <laughs> well, that's my uh, daughter being interviewed by our managing editor, Shireen Bhan, uh, <laughs> complaining that uh, I don't spend enough time uh, with her, so <laughs> that's uh, quite something. It was a fun thing yesterday, and uh, we'll play, play more of the interaction with all the kids. I mean, the little ones there. Uh, CNBC TV 18 is all set to lead the charge with a one of a kind mega initiative, uh, Future Female Forward, uh, the Women's Collective, presented by HSBC. The initiative will be officially launched through an exclusive on ground event on Friday, November 25th, uh, with several women leaders of India Inc. Also in attendance will be some of the most uh, influential voices from the business, entrepreneurship and entertainment spaces. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow on CNBC TV 18. Uh, that is Friday, November 25th, 5.30 p.m. onwards. Well, uh, you know, let's go across to Mitesh. Uh, he's standing by. Mitesh, uh, we are bursting away actually on the Nifty as we speak. We're up close to around 200 points odd. And I think once that 18,430 odd level got broken, but well, we quickly did a 50 point odd. Now it appears that we're headed to those fresh all time highs. How, how are you tracking the Nifty? Um, so one, I think that uh, getting past 18,430, you know, that entails a fresh breakout. I spoke about that and uh, we've again added to our long positions. Uh, this should possibly now see us target the 18,604, uh, which is the intraday highs, the all-time intraday highs, which the markets did in uh, October of 21. And, and I think that's the next target area. But eventually I see much higher levels. Having said that, two buy calls on the uh, for the BTSC trade. TCS is closing above the 200 average with good momentum. That's a BTST. Uh, keep a stop below 3370 here. Look for 3420 as the target. And Tech Mahindra uh, is the other one. That's a BTST with a stop below uh, 1060 for targets of 1085. Okay, look at that. The Sensex has hit a record high and the Nifty as well is now trading at a fresh 52-week high. The earlier 52-week high was 18,442 that we hit about in the middle of November. Uh, but just in the last 30 minutes, aided by the risk-on rally that we saw in global markets overnight, the decline in crude prices to $85 per barrel and perhaps a bit of uh, help coming in from the November expiry. So post 3 p.m., we've seen a fantastic up move in the markets. It's a vertical rise on the benchmark indices. The Nifty and the Sensex are racing away. The mid-caps are falling behind, but they are trying to climb higher as we speak. Um, remember the move started exactly at, at, uh, 3 at 3 p.m. Exactly at 3 p.m. And it continues. The surge continues. I mean, the Nifty will have, a, have to wait a little bit uh, more, uh, but not much. I mean, just 120 odd points uh, and uh, we'll be there. I mean, uh, half a percent, 0.6 percent, that's it on the Nifty as well. But the Sensex has made a, uh, the good old Sensex has made a new high, a new record high. The Nifty Bank is 
of course, uh, been making record highs before. I mean, we started going sideways the last couple of days. And uh, this is, uh, you know, sort of uh, pretty big uh, in that sense. A new high generally opens up. I mean, you, you're looking at uncharted territory. Uh, you know, you don't have a reference point. You, you could do projections, etc. cetera. Uh, but it generally is uh, sort of, you know, uncharted waters in that sense. Uh, and that's why it kind of uh, opens up possibility, imagination, and what the market will do But you do know what? Here. Given how sideways the markets have been and pretty much gone nowhere in the last one year, despite us being at all-time high levels, the euphoria in the markets is missing. Typically, when we hit all these all-time high levels, you can see the tezi in the markets, as they call it, right? There's thumping. People are all excited. They're making money on their portfolios. But this time, you've not really made that much money in the markets because if you look at the one-year returns, they're hardly 2%, 3%, 4% thereabouts. So, so I'm saying that... Yeah. No, no, the emotion in the market, uh, you know, appears to be missing this time. You're, you're absolutely right, and we'll depend on you to generate some of that <laughs> euphoria and some of that stuff. I, but think, I think it's it, you need the money to. Uh... <laughs> no, but I think Rima, uh, I think the the point is that uh, through the course of this year, the market didn't fall that much, right? Okay. It, uh, it, I think that is the story of the market. By the way, you can perhaps, I mean, we'll have to check, of course, uh, and be absolutely sure. But I would imagine that amongst large markets. Uh, actually, even most markets, uh, we are perhaps the only market which is at a new all-time high, right? Very few other markets, maybe one or two, of any meaningful size would be at new highs. So I think that is a story, which is basically one of falling much lesser as compared to global markets, and then coming back to where it started falling, uh, which was October of 2021, uh, which, is, which was the previous record high from where the market uh, started to fall. But I think your point is absolutely taken you know, that, that uh, all-inclusive kind of enthusiasm and uh, that, that is kind of obviously, it's, it won't be because that's not the kind of market that we are uh, in. Uh, the big story has been relative outperformance and of course, a little bit of absolute performance as well. Amrish Baliga is with us. Amrish, you want to comment uh, on these highs on the Sensex and the Bank Nifty? Yeah, uh, in, fact, in fact, one good thing which has happened now is at least in the last few days it has consolidated at these levels and now it has moved up. So hopefully the higher levels uh, should hold for a while. And uh, as far as uh, profits are concerned in portfolios, I think uh, quite a few portfolios are still in losses because uh, the stocks which actually moved in 2021 and people holding those stocks, uh, the, 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 the stars of 2021, are in fact uh, I mean, showing losses. And uh, 2022 was a completely different uh, set of stocks. So I mean, those who have bought fresh in 2022 have actually made money those who are holding on to the 2021 stars are still losing. So, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I think because of that, there's no euphoria as such. Not everyone is making money. But, I mean, you, you, you have some of those guys who have also bought IPOs recently. They made money. Uh, but then not the whole market. Mm. Hi, Amrish. Well, as we speak, we're dancing away. We're moving to around 18,500. And just three big boys should come up for you on the screen. TCS, Reliance and ITC. These three heavyweights, they have seen, just take a look at that chart, you know, of all these three stocks. They have moved one way, and that's clearly helping the Nifty move higher. The Nifty Bank, by the way, is up close to 350 points, and 18,500 is almost here. Remember at the start of the show, we made this point, 18,430. If that gets crossed, you could easily take out close to around 50 points out. And that's precisely what's happened. We're up 70 points once we took off that 18,430-odd mark. Well, Amrish, what do you do from here? From the mid-cap space, I believe that you're fancying some of these uh, new-age companies, so to call it. Uh, which one Absolutely. is it? Uh, the stock is Delivery. Uh, that's India's largest and fastest-growing express logistics player. It has a very strong market share in the three fastest-growing areas, which is express parcel, partial truckload, which is called PTL, and third-party logistics. So it has cornered about 25% share in India's overall e-commerce express uh, parcel market which uh, currently is just about 3% of China's, and it continues to grow at about 30% annually. So Express Parcel is delivery's dominant growth driver right now. About 60% of the sales comes from there. And uh, this segment is, again, driven entirely by e-commerce. I mean, there were a few hiccups, no doubt, uh, in the recent past with the management update in early October regarding the slight slowdown in the PTL segment as well as the supply chain services. And uh, they've had integration challenges uh, between delivery and the recent acquisition of Spot-on. And the Q2 numbers were more or less in line with the management update. And lately, the, there has been a pressure due to the end of that lock-in. Uh, but I believe uh, most of the uh, negatives are already priced in, including the lock-in liquidity. 
and uh, I, and I, th I think further this uh, new axle load norms and initiatives like ONDC, I think this will further support the sector's growth. So I believe the leader like delivery will be back on track. Uh, I mean and achieve the real EBITDA. Uh, I mean uh, not the perceived EBITDA, but the uh, uh, real EBITDA possibly by uh, the next 12 to 15 months. So looking at uh, the DCF uh, for next seven years with a growth of about 25% CAGR, I, I, I'm getting a, a target of about 625 over the next 12 months. So I think that's a decent return from here with not too much of a downside. HSBC today lowered the target price on delivery. Earlier it was 710. They brought it down to 455. Two reasons. One, they believe the e-commerce industry growth rate itself is slowing down from here on. And they're saying, two, consecutive weak quarters in terms of numbers has shattered the street's confidence in terms of a near to medium term outlook. But that's about delivery. Um, Ambrish, do stay on. We want to talk about another important story, and that is the Tata Group. In the last couple of years, the Tata Group has been expanding its presence across sectors through multiple strategic acquisitions of large companies. The group is now back in the limelight as it looks to buy iconic brand Bisleri. Sonia is here to wrap up this acquisition as well as the acquisition spree of the Tata Group. Sonia? Well, as you rightly pointed out, the Tata Group has been on an acquisition spree over the last two years. It's back in the limelight now with the impending acquisition of the iconic brand Bisleri for around 7,000 crores. Ramesh Chauhan of Bisleri spoke to CNBC TV 18 and spoke about how the Tata Group will nurture and take care of the brand. We know how the Tatas are actively in the water portfolio through brands like Himalayan and Tata Water Plus. And the Tatas are not new to acquisitions uh, as well. In Tata Consumer, in the past, Tatas have gone ahead and acquired Soulful too. But let's move on to some of the other sectors. The big deal, remember, took place in 2021 when Tata Sons won that bid to own 100% stake in Air India by paying 18,000 crores. Then in July of 2022, Tata Steel bought Nilanchal Ispath for over 12,100 crores. The Tata Group also cemented its foray into the online grocery market. In 2021, Tata Digital acquired majority stake in Big Basket for 400 crores. And in the same year, Tata Digital acquired the online pharmacy business 1MG for 720 crores. These are just the acquisitions, but there were several other big strategic monetization and deals that took place in the Tata Group. In defense and power, for example, let's start with that. When BlackRock Real Assets invested 4,000 crores for a little over 10% stake in Tata Power Renewables, we also had GE Aerospace and Tata Advanced Systems that signed a long-term contract worth almost $1 billion for production and supply of several commercial aircraft engine components. Now, let's wrap this up by saying that these acquisitions, although ambitious, have not always been successful in the past. It is early days to judge these deals and assess if they are value accretive and returns accretive. But the important point here is that the group has a renewed focus now on mergers and acquisitions under the leadership of N. Chandrasekharan. Back to you. Well, that's a very interesting uh, wrap-up of uh, Tata Group's efforts and uh, what they've been doing on the uh, M&A side. I mean, uh, sprawling ambition, really. Ambrish, of course, is still with us. Uh, Ambrish. Uh, you know, so the gains uh, kind of continue, uh, 18, uh, 5, 21 now. And obviously, we, we won't be able to take our eyes off the Nifty now, now that the Sensex is all-time high. Still, it makes a new all-time right. high. <laughs> uh, but you you, uh, you have uh, usually a stock pick and uh, what you want to uh, talk about. Uh, uh, do, you, do you have one today, Amrish? No, uh, in fact, I just gave my stock pick, uh, which is delivery. Delivery. Okay, um, delivery was the yeah. pick. Okay, fair I enough. about 75. Okay. That's interesting, though. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the new one, right? New age one. You, yeah. you stacked it up against uh, the blue dots of the world, and uh, this still comes, up, uh, comes out on top? Yeah, despite that, I mean, it's been the fastest growing. I mean, if you see the last couple of years, uh, I mean, the sort of a growth which, which it has shown compared to uh, most of the other players, uh, it's been much uh, much better than the rest of them, and uh, the only issue with uh, the the, the uh, uh, new age stocks is about uh, being cash positive or EBITDA positive. And here, I believe uh, that uh, this company should be real EBITDA positive in the next 12 to 15 months. I think that should be the game changer for this. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, uh, and uh, there's a space we continue to track and follow as well. Delivery is Ambrish's pick. We'll take a break here. There's seven minutes to go for close. Of course, if you're just joining us, it's new highs for the Semsex and not very far for the Nifty now as well. See you on the other side.
Welcome back. Well, the bulls are parting on the Lal Street. The headline index is moving to fresh all-time highs. That's the nifty 18,604. That's the level you're looking at. But the mid-cap index, that's lagging yet again. Let's hope in the next few days the party gets better and they as well start participating. By the way, on Lupin, we have, uh, uh, you know, a disclosure that's come on the exchanges. Uh, they have said that the US FDA inspected their Mandadeep Unit 1 facility in the last week or so. That's on the 14th of November to 23rd. And the inspection of the facility closed with the issuance of a Form 483 with eight observations for the drug product as well as the API facility. So we'll have to analyze what impact will it have. But, uh, uh, you know, Amrish, what's your take? Uh, you know, the pharma pack as well as on Lupin, if any view. Uh, some of that bad news doesn't stop for some of these companies. And U.S. pricing erosion is something that's been hurting them. That's true, and because of which uh, we have seen uh, quite a few of them have uh, like uh, underperformed, and uh, Lupin has been the one which, have been, which has been hit the most. Although it's been on a on a buy list, but then uh, we have been keeping a watch, closed watch, not really asking people to buy right now. I think uh, we'll have to see as to how this plays out. So better to stay on the sidelines. Okay. Uh, very quickly, Ambari Shadani Enterprises. The board meets tomorrow to consider fundraise. There, are, you know, big size is spoken about 1.8 billion, 2.4 billion dollar. But um, your thoughts on Adani Enterprises? In fact, uh, this is one group. I mean, although it's, it's got a very large market cap, I've avoided uh, tracking it. All right, uh, Ambarish, uh, we'll uh, leave it at that. By the way, the markets, the Nifty is going to end about that 18,500 mark. The Sensex is going to go home with a gain of close to about 900 points. It's a fresh record high on the Sensex. Uh, and Prashant, all the big moves came in the last 30 minutes, right? IT led from the front, of course. Yeah, no, absolutely. It uh, came uh, in the last 30, last, uh, 30 minutes of trade. Uh, and the tradition continues in that sense. Although uh, today is special because, I mean, we, we are at new highs on the... Uh, Sensex and the Nifty Bank. Sensex, of course, uh, the bigger of the two. Uh, bank Nifty, of course, was making newer highs even before. Uh, you know, let me just quickly try and uh, wrap out things in terms of sectors and large stocks before we get into uh, the uh, broader markets, uh, really. Uh, so we have IT, which is up about 3%. Uh, the index, that is, IT index up uh, 3%. So big one, actually. I think a lot of contribution, a lot of participation coming through from IT names. Uh, and then it's banks, I mean, you know, financial uh, nifty and uh, those indices which did well. So between those two, I think you had bulk of the moves uh, really uh, coming through. Actually, I think you'll be able to see that in contribution. Uh, between the HDFC twins, you had about a 50 point move, 55 point index point contribution. Infosys single-handedly is uh, 45 index points today. So that is 100 clean between three names, 100 points. Infosys, HDFC and HDFC Bank. And then you throw in a, a you know, Reliance and TCS, uh, that is another 45 points or so. Uh, so it's uh, concentrated, but the large gains con uh, sort of coming through in IT services and uh, banks and a loan Reliance. I mean, if you want to kind of talk about that, but uh, that's the bulk of the move in terms of large cap streamer. Uh, the mid-cap index up half a percent, so trailing the frontliners in terms of the percentage gains. The advanced decline ratio positive, four in the green for three in the red. Fino Payments was the big star, up 13 percent. PB Fintech rallying about 10 percent. IT stocks very smart move, particularly towards the end of trades. So names like Reddington higher in trade, LNT Infotech, Birla Soft, Persistent, all of them plucking in gains of close to about five odd percent. Apart from that, on the gaining side, BKG. Um, had a rally of close to about 10%, so now up 25-30% from its issue price of nearly 30%. A couple of these oil and gas names like GSPL, MRPL, also up and about in trade. On the losing side, IOB came in for some profit booking along with that central bank and Paytm was subdued. Paytm down 2.5% for the day and it's now down 30% for this month. Well, with that, it's a wrap on the closing bell. It's been a very special day for our market as the Sensex clocks in record high levels, while the Nifty inch is very close to it. But don't go anywhere. On the other side, our Thursday special Big Deal comes up next.